So now that we've got our fruit harvested, removed our lower leaves, and got our vine clip supports tied onto the plants, cluster pruned our clusters, suckered, and have put on our J-hooks to support our trusses, it is now time to lean and lower our plants. So to lean and lower these plants starts when they're younger, right? So when they're about three, four, five-ish feet tall, and they're going through and they're growing straight up that string, once we hit that four or five foot range, we're gonna start sliding the bobbin on our cable, start training that plant to lean in the direction we're gonna want to lean and lower it, right? So these plants are what we refer to as indeterminate varieties. So they continue to set new flowers off of their new growth. And if we're gonna grow them in the greenhouse from nine to 12 months, and we've only got 10 foot of head space, they're gonna to have to be lowered to create space. So we start by leaning that plant the direction that we're gonna want it to to go. So in this case, in this row that we have here, the plants that are in the row that are beside me are all heading towards the back of the house and the ones that are on the other side of the drain line are going towards the front of the house. And we'll see here shortly that the plants that are on the other side of the drain line, the side that I'm not on, have to make the corner and work their way all the way back down and then the same thing at the other end of the greenhouse. They'll have to go through and make the corner and start coming back up towards the front of the greenhouse. And these plants should be between 30 or 40 feet long by the time we are done with this crop when we terminate it nine months, 12 months later. So here you go through and see how we've already started to lean and lower these vines, starting to slope heading back this direction. We've got this little aluminum stand here that we've built that acts as a guide, help guide the vines, especially when we're going through and making that turn. All the vines that are on this side of the drain line are all running towards the back of the greenhouse, and then all of the vines that are on the other side are all running towards the front. Get this plant as we work our way back up towards the front, turn this one around the corner. So since all of these vines are going towards the back of the house, for us to lean and lower these, we need to start at the back of the house to be making a space all the way down for these plants to go into. I can't lower this vine first because I want it to be where these vines are at. So I have to get these vines out of the way. And it just works its way all the way down until we get to the end of the greenhouse. And so our very end row is gonna have to go across to the next side to start running its way up to the front. We see that we've got a taller vine that then is followed by a shorter vine that then is again followed by a taller vine. So what we're gonna end up doing is when we lower this one, we're gonna leave this plant in place and then we're gonna pass it with our plant that's a little bit taller on this side so that everything goes through and is at the same height level across the top, right? So here I take this, I lower it down a frap, pull it down, and then I'll go over to this vine here and pass this vine and put it in this space that's right here so everything has an even top across the top. So we are down here at the last plant on our row of tomatoes that's leaning towards the back of the greenhouse. And so we need to make this turn so that we have a space for the next plant to go through and occupy. So we take our bobbin off of the support wire, let a wrap or two off of the bobbin, and then we're gonna take it across to the other cable that's on the other side of the buckets. And then you'll see that we opened up this space here to where I can grab my next bobbin and let two wraps or so off of the bobbin and then slide it down into the place where the other bobbin was before. Now the goal is to try to get the vines to go through and lay on top of the buckets so that the vines aren't laying down in the aisle to go through and get damaged by people stepping on them, ladders going by, so on and so forth. So as we're training these, we wanna go through and try to be making sure that we get them to lay on top of the buckets. And then it's just continue to repeat the process. Put two wraps down, slide it down to where the other plant was. And we'll just keep working our way down through the greenhouse. Came down off the ladder here to see how the bottom of my vines are doing. These fruits were folded up on top of themselves laying on the ground. So I picked up that truss and went through and laid it on top of the bucket to help train this vine to go through and sit back. And then here, we've got these guys that are going through and doing the same thing. I'm just adjusting my fruit trusses and have those sitting back over top of the buckets so that as these go through and continue to lower, lay on top, not down in the aisles. This one that's in the back is our tall vine. This one in the front is our short vine. When we're lowering this. We're gonna put it behind this vine to go through and help with crossing and keeping the fruit, um, keeping the fruit from getting all tangled up. Since I'm not on an outside row, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my shorter plant, which is on the outside, and I'm going to stretch it over here across the aisle onto this empty strand here to get this plant out of my way to make it easier to get to the vine that I'm gonna pass with. Drag that down, 
and I lower it down here. And now that that plant is lowered and in the correct spot, I take my shorter vine back, take it across, and put it back where it was. And now we'll continue to move down the row, leaning and lowering. So now we're here at the end of our row and we need to go through and make the other turn. So this is where we're most careful so that we don't go through and break our vines. So I've got these two plants that need to make it over. This one needs to come over and occupy this space. And then that one will just come straight over and have another week before it goes through and starts to get lowered into place. So I do a couple of fraps and start to ease my vine around here, not to cause that vine to pop and break. So right like that. Ease that down and it's gonna sit right there. I don't wanna go much more because I'll give that some time to rest and stretch. Decide that that's the way that it wants to grow. I grab this guy and just simply bring him over to the other wire. Lower it a couple. And then next week it'll go through and make the corner just like this one did this week. So here you go through and see how we've made this turn right, and our vine is laying on top of our bucket, and we've made these little aluminum racks to help with that, to keep this vine from wanting to slide off this way and get entangled in with these vines. It's just some scrap aluminum pieces and uh, T and 90 connectors that we had. Give this something to rest on and something to push up against as we make these corners. It just makes our life a lot easier, training the vines to go around the ends. So, and so then, like I said, next week, this one, and get manipulated around, it makes the corner as well. So this is the most difficult part of leaning and lowering is going through and making your corners, making sure not stressing these vines to the point to where they break and just give them enough opportunity to rest or make those corners. That's why we lean it and take it over to the one corner on the one week. And then the next week we'll take it and get it to make the corner. So this will basically end up here to flex around come next week. Just the same way that we went through and made this one do it. One other thing to check on and make sure after we do our leaning and lowering is make sure that all of these tubes and our button drippers are still in place because there are instances where a cluster can get caught on these and pop them off. And then if it's the, the tube goes through and comes off of here, it still can go through and drip into the bucket, but then you're dripping on top of your top cover, which is just gonna grow algae. But if you've gone through and, or one of the spray stakes has come out and it's not going into the bucket, we're only getting half the amount of water that we think we're getting in that bucket. And that's gonna go through an impact growth and then the health of the plant. So, and making sure that all those emitters are where they belong to help keep your crop nice and healthy.